Michael McNamara, welcome today to the Dallas Film Podcast. My name is Tony Armour. I am the Dallas Film Commissioner. My name is Andrew Vell. I'm the Project Specialist of the Dallas Film Commission. And thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Great to be here. Yeah. So obviously you've got the uh, Key West Film Festival t-shirt on, so we know that you, uh, you do some great, great work with Key West <laughs> Film Festival. Um, but yeah. give us a little bit of your background and tell us you know, what other festivals you work for and kind of what, what you do in general in this, uh, in this whole world. Sure. As a, as a programmer, I've helped out with several different festivals. I've helped out at Sundance. I've helped out at Newport Beach Film Festival, Austin Film Festival. Um, I helped out with Chicago International Film Festival uh, over the years. And uh, first and foremost right now is Key West Film Festival since it's coming up. <laughs> Uh, on the calendar and we are right in that decision-making process so it's a fun time to talk about what goes into those decisions and and uh, maybe give some advice to filmmakers and then uh, beyond that in the independent film industry I mostly work as an actor and also as a producer awesome awesome, awesome. well how did you, how did you then get started really with uh, you know that's a that's a, a big number of festivals to to work to mm -hmm. work with how did you really get started then in the industry as far as the programming side for film festivals goes? You know, the main key is you just start volunteering. You pick one and you just say, hey, do you need any help watching films? <laughs> and that's all you have to say. <laughs> need any help watching films? Mm -hmm. I, I like watching films. Do you need any help watching films? And then you um, kind of go from there. I mean, you're, you're putting the time in, do you know what I mean? And you're more than likely volunteering, but the key is just to, uh, I think the first one I started watching films for was Chicago International. Mm -hmm. Um, when I was, uh, living in Chicago, which was where I was born and raised. And then I wound up, I acted in a film that premiered at Dallas International Film there Festival, you go. actually, coincidentally enough, it was right. called QWERTY. And I met some folks from Austin Film Festival and said, hey, do you guys need any help watching films? And they said, yeah, sure, we could use some help. And then, and then I was going to Sundance every year. So um, each year I would try to find someone at Sundance, you know, one of the mm -hmm. programmers, like how can I just be kind of expanding my reach and getting more involved in the independent film community? And uh, by the time I finally talked to a programmer at Austin Film, or excuse me, at Sundance, I was helping out at Austin, I was helping out at Chicago International, so I was able to kind of have the experience and know what I was doing so that I could go to them and say, hey, do you need help watching films? And that was right around the time where everything was going digital and Sundance was just starting to get, there was, there was so much more content that uh, yeah. they were expanding their team. and, and um, yeah, then I just started, then, then, then the reality sets in, yeah. right? Yeah. Then 50, 50 Blu-rays show up at your house, <laughs> and you're like, what am I going to do with these 50? <laughs> I have to watch all of these? You're like, oh, I have to, I have to watch. What am I done? <laughs> but it's, it's, uh, it's super fun, and it's exciting with all, with all of the film festivals, so... Mm -hmm. um, no, it's good, and that's yeah, that's great, and that's and you know, and you know, my background as well of you know, uh, co-founding Sunscreen Film Festival in St. Pete, going into our nineteenth year in twenty twenty four, and so yeah, anytime Amazing. somebody wants to reach out and say, hey, I'd like to be a screener at your festival, you know, we don't just let anybody be a screener, but the more the the more the merrier because you have a lot of a lot of movies to watch. Mm -hmm. It's uh, and it makes a big difference. And the truth is. Even if it's someone that isn't in the film industry yep. or is very casual with films or whatever their connection is to film, it's worth bringing them on your team to watch films as long mm -hmm. as they're as long as they're prompt and they're commu and they communicate and they get the job done. Because if they're just hey, I'm just a casual cinephile or hey, I just like movies, that's okay. Then then you're getting that perspective on all the films that they're screening. So really, yeah. you know, for anyone watching this, if you're thinking like, well, but I'm not a, I'm not a director, I'm not a cinematographer. Mm -hmm. It's like truly anybody can get involved with any film festival in the country. Just, just jump in and volunteer and, and ask, uh, ask to help watch some films. I think that's yeah. a really great point because, mm -hmm. you know, one of the things when you are programming 
films for a festival is you do have to think about your audience in general, you know, who's, who's watching the films, and you want a variety of perspectives. You want the 60-year-old lady who's watching it. You want the 20-year-old college student. You want people from diverse backgrounds and ethnicities, and you want to get a wide variety, you know, that are looking at the films so that you can get a broad perspective of, you know, what the programming is. Yeah, and to your point, the more the merrier. The more the merrier, yeah. and and the more and really the more watches you can get on films, the better it is for the filmmakers just to have it seen by as many people as possible, and to get as like you said as many different perspectives on films as possible. So I do think that's the beauty of film festivals because they're meant to bring people together, not just filmmakers, but also just the people living in that particular city, whether it's. Uh, St. Pe- Petersburg Clearwater, like with Sunscreen, or with the amazing Dallas International Film Festival, or you know, Sundance is kind of bringing people in from all over the all over the world. They each have their role, and it's about bringing people together. And you can also do that on the organizational side. Yeah, that you can just bring people with all sorts of different film backgrounds and cinephile backgrounds uh, to come to come work together. Now, you do primarily the shorts programming at Key West. And right. when you did Sundance, did you do features or shorts at uh, at Sundance? U.S. narrative features primarily. Narrative, fe- narrative features. Yeah. So, so we, that's, um, that's pretty fun. Yeah. Can yeah. you talk a little bit about the difference when you mm-hmm. are programming features versus shorts? Like what you're looking for. Is, is there a difference? You know, how do you watch them? Differently, uh, obviously, one is much longer than yeah. than the than the other. But just your sort of philosophy and what you're looking for in in each of those, you know, compared to each other. Well, I will say with Sundance, um, my work has been as a programming associate for U.S. Narrative Features, so I'm really helping to kind of narrow it down to the finalists, so to speak. If yeah. you think of it as a competition or a tournament, I'm trying to narrow it down to who are who are who's that final four for particular you know for a particular slot or who are you know who's in that final round from a monstrous number of submissions yeah Mm -hmm. um for key west i'm really kind of making the final decisions for the shorts program so it's a little different Mm -hmm. but i'm looking for the same things with features with shorts we want the, the main keys are am I emotionally invested in what's happening on the screen? Mm-hmm. And is there originality? And is it well done? Is, you know, are, are the, are the, is the cast and crew skilled at what they're doing? And that's actually third on the list for yeah. me. First and foremost is, am I emotionally invested in what's happening on the screen? Whatever it is, if it's, if it's a, a documentary about rescue dogs, if it's an intense, uh, if it's a super intense narrative drama that's taking place in, uh, you know, in Africa or, or anywhere, like, am I invested in what's happening? Mm-hmm. Do I care about the characters on the screen? Whether that's a documentary or narrative scripted, do I care about what's happening? Because if you're not emotionally invested in what's happening on the screen, you disengage and ultimately the film sputters and it's forgettable. I hate yep. to say that, but that's what, if you're not in, and so how do I become emotionally invested in the screen? Well, it can be a lot of different things, right? You can have an amazing script, but a lot of times you can have an amazing script and the actors and the filmmakers aren't able to bring it to the screen. Other times you can have a script that's kind of so-so, but the actors just have that charisma and just that they've got that that they've got that special something that when they're on the screen, you lean in. You just want to know what's going on with them. No matter when when that person comes on the screen, you lean in. So and or it can be incredible cinematography that's just immersing you in whatever in whatever world uh is is being faced by these characters so the key is am i emotionally invested and there really isn't always a formula to if if if, uh if you're invested to what will get folks invested but the key i think is uh exciting complex characters i like keeping i like seeing stakes being pretty high it's not a requirement but you want the stakes to be high even if it's just a 
junior high recital. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> the stakes are extremely high for those people that are involved. Do you know what I mean? It, it doesn't have to be Oppenheimer. It, it's just the stakes need to be very high for those characters. It could be the first date. It could be the 101st date for someone. Maybe they're 70 years old and they're going on their first date after being kind of out of the stating game. For Well, if we care about those actors, if we care about that character and the stakes are so high for this trip to the Olive Garden on a <laughs> we lean in. Yeah. We lean in. So it, it, it can, every story can achieve that kind of emotional investment that, mm -hmm. that I'm looking for as a film festival programmer. Well, that's that's good to know for I imagine a lot of younger filmmakers or just filmmakers in general, they hear Sundance and they want to they're just brainstorming how to get in just because it can be a career changing festival. And so that's just, just such, that's a good note for them to know is is your movie emotionally it can a viewer be emotionally invested in it for the length of time for, for emotional, whatever it is. emotional investment. And to your point, I, I think as a filmmaker, it's important to tell your story don't think what's Sundance looking for what's Key West looking for what's Tribeca looking for what's Chicago International don't think about what are the festivals looking for think about what's my story what do I want to tell you know this isn't a uh, computer program you know what I mean this isn't an algorithm this isn't it's not we're not baking a cake you know you have to tell a story that means something to you. Because if you're just telling the story that you're like, well, these subjects are trending right now and this is what people want to hear about. And well, and, 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 and you're 100... done, they won't be trending anymore. I yeah. promise yeah. you that. Yeah, um, you're, you're 100... Anybody that made a, you know, some films a few years ago, by the time they got the film done, the events and everything that they were documenting had passed so far that, that the story had lost its originality uh, and, and it's excitement. So it's important. Tell the story that you want to tell. Don't worry about what are these festivals looking for or that. Yeah, and I think that's a really important point because so many times, you know, you've seen thousands of films, I've seen thousands of films, and sometimes it feels like on a on a year-to-year on a -year basis there's some global theme that indie filmmakers have latched onto that this is, this is what they want to say for this year, and you get... 10, 20 films that are all about the exact same thing. And they think, every, you know, each individual one thinks it's the, it's, they're the only one telling that story, not realizing that there's 30 other people just with that festival that have all submitted. And you kind of have to look at that and, and be like, all right, this is the 10th film I've seen on, I don't yeah. know, pick, pick the random topic kind of thing. And it's, mm -hmm. and, and it's like... Topic that was trending at this or that. Time. But, and if you say, hey, I'm, well, I want to de dedicate the next two years year and a half of my life to telling this story then by all means go for it don't stay away from it because it's a popular story but just make sure that this is a story you want to tell yeah because we all know a, a film is making a film is just such a tremendous mountain to climb really every scene of every film is a tremendous mountain to climb and then once you get it shot now you're going into post-production, which is the most daunting of all of it. Mm -hmm. And you don't have money for that part. And then <laughs> after all that, after you get it done and you're exhausted, now we're going to bring it out to the film festivals, right? Now you're going to start submitting to film festivals and going through the highs and lows of that. So it really is um, a marriage to that film and to that story. So you have to make sure for yourself, I think, that it's the story that you want to tell. Yeah. Yeah, um, and... It if you feel like, well, we want to give it this flavor or that because, uh, you know, th these are, um, it, you know, if we if we want to set this story in, in this setting or that because that's something that's more current, so be it. But just make sure that the story you're telling and that the characters that you're developing matter to you. We don't want to just, no one wants to be telling stories just because they're like, this is what they're looking for. Yeah, and I think people do that sometimes. They're like, well, I want to get into Sundance, so I need to make a film about XYZ, and mm -hmm. and the, the lead character has to die at the end. It has to be really sad and depressing and, <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> and whatever so it might be. say, you know, Sundance won't show comedies. Sundance shows comedies. 
sometimes, you know, but um, I do know some festivals that I think focus more on drama. And it, it, you do hear the term, like, does it feel like a Sundance film? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you do have, I always say it's, it's much harder to make people laugh than it is to make them cry. Right. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, I think it's much, it's, it's much easier to have that drama where you're, you're going to break, where you're going to, you're going to have those big emotional moments and break people down. And those do get more appealing to festivals. Maybe some of the bigger ones like Sundance. I also think sometimes some of the bigger actors that are trying to make that Oscar run, that's yeah. where they go. Do you know what I mean? They go to those bigger roles. So I think it kind of, kind of feeds on, you know, it, 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 that ramps it up. Yeah. That some, you know, Kate Winslet and some of these folks, they're going for the big emotional roles for those kind of Oscar vehicles. And then those are in turn the, the festival, the films that Toronto and some of these other big festivals want to program because the, um, so, but. Well, and I think, you know, going back to your point a little bit there too, you know, when you, when you finish, a, the comedy. yeah, when you finish a film, you know, and you are going out on the film festival circuit, you're basically committing to another year of your life of following this film around on the festival circuit. So, you know, don't throw all your eggs in one basket on this one film. What else are you working on next? Maybe you should be working on something else while that film is on the, on the circuit or trying to get it on the circuit. So, you know, well, let's talk from the shorts perspective as well, because so many more people are making shorts than are making features. And that's obviously, you know, what your uh, focus is at Key West. For Key West in general, how many shorts do you guys get submitted? And then what do you end up programming over the course of the, over the, course of the festival? Hmm. In terms of what's submitted, um, it's bumped up over the last few years. I would say we're in that 800 to 1,000 range mm -hmm. in terms of the short films that are submitted. I think we'll program 60 to 70. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, which that's a small, you know, that's a smaller percentage, but um, but that's, that's par for the course. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just to give you perspective, um, Sundance will show 60 or 70 films as well. They get 8,000 short film <laughs> submissions. Yeah. 8,000. Yeah. Does that mean you shouldn't submit to Sundance? No, I actually think you should submit to Sundance, but you, you have to understand what, what the odds are. And yeah, and also factoring in that there's labs, there's alumni, yeah. there, are, there are studios that are, vying, that, that are vying for these spots. But the, the programmers at Sundance... You know, I, I really think just them seeing your film is worth the price of admission. Do you that, know what I mean? You know um, what? I can tell you from my perspective, I'll refer films uh, to other festivals. I do it all the time. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's a really interesting perspective because I've I've said for a long time talking to talking to filmmakers, you know, like the odds of your film getting into Sundance or Solo, they're such a small, small percentage. Do, do you want to spend that hundred dollars on, you know, because sometimes festivals are only 50 or 30 to submit a short. Do you want to be able to submit to a couple other festivals where you ha your opportunities are maybe a little higher, or do you want to just send that $100? I always say, you know, th uh, roll it up in a ball and throw it in a garbage can. But I, I, I want to hear, I like hearing your perspective mm -hmm. of, no, it's important just for people to see it, just for those programmers to, to see it, because so, that's been a different perspective. You're making me rethink what I've said all these years about submitting to Sundance a little <laughs> bit, so I'm, I'm glad you've got a different perspective on that. Well, I, I promise you the shorts programmers at Sundance or Tribeca or Toronto, they help out, they probably help out with other festivals as well, or at least they know filmmakers at other uh, or they know programmers at, uh, at other film festivals. Mm -hmm. um, I can tell you I refer, whether it's one I receive for Key West or Sundance or one that I see when I'm watching films for Austin, I will. I just texted uh, another programmer yesterday about a film that I recently saw that I loved. So um, now back to, so I do think it's it's worthwhile to submit, but to bring it back to what you said, the key is what is your budget? Yeah. That is the key. And this is where festival strategy and your plan for outreach, you really have to have a plan. You can't go on Film Freeway and just start clicking buttons. <laughs> yeah. And you You're... also can't just say, well, we're just, what, what's the top five? What are the top 25 yep. film festivals? We're just gonna submit to those. It's like, 
Now, if you have $5,000 as your budget for festival submissions, mm -hmm. then that's one thing. If your festival submission budget is like $500, I, I would say don't, I would probably not submit to the top 20 film festivals, you know, or yeah. maybe pick one. Or yeah. Maybe, is there one where you or a member of your team are an alum, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, you know, but just a cold submission, if you only have $500 that you're working with, you don't want to burn all 500 of that on festivals that are extremely, extremely yeah. competitive. I, you know, I agree with so. you. I'm glad. I'm glad you said that because there, it, there really is a festival strategy that you figure out as a as a short filmmaker, even a feature filmmaker, when you only have X amount of dollars to spend. And and it really is, you know, taking a look at, you know, we talk about Film Freeway because that's the main platform really that people use as far as American film festivals go. There are other submission platforms that are sometimes more European based, um, but Film Freeway is, you know, the main one. And and it's like, don't be afraid to look at those festivals that are, you know, that you've never heard of before. But, you know, you just really have to do your research and dig through and, you know, can I, can, how can I submit to 20 film festivals with this $500 as opposed to just submitting to five or six? Because mm -hmm. then your opportunities do go up for, you know, getting into festivals and then being referred maybe to others from there as well. And I imagine, too, like if I make a horror short film, there's probably... 10 horror short films that I may be interested in submitting to rather than Tribeca or like a Sundance and I'll probably have a better chance of getting into these 10 smaller horror film festivals. And Andrew makes a good point there because you can look on Film Freeway under horror and yeah. just look at what and find a lot of those uh, film festivals that might be of interest to you. Also, and this is important, when you go to a film festival, ask those programmers Hey, I had a hey, I had an awesome time at your film festival. Are there any other festivals that you recommend? Mm -hmm. I promise you, they know other programmers, and there's a decent chance maybe they'll make an email introduction to some other programmers, what have you, and you can get some waivers or some discount codes in that way. The other thing I would do is ask other filmmakers in your block. Mm -hmm. Hey, what other film festivals are you checking out? Because hey, then they'll tell you. Hey, I went to this film festival in New York, or hey, I went to this film festival in Oklahoma, and it was really good. No one's heard of it, but it was really good. Or they might say, hey, I went to this other film festival that I thought was going to be great, but nobody showed up. You know, so when you're at a film festival, put, put quality time in with the programmers of that festival and with the filmmakers that are also at that, also at that film festival. And uh, I think those are important points. And, and then um, I think it's also important. You have to know what your budget is and you have to know what, what you want your film festival run to look like. Yeah. Are, are you planning on traveling all over the country and all <laughs> over the world? Are you planning on going to all these? Right. Is that, or Because if you are, then that's, that's a, one, that's going to be a lot of money that you're spending. That's cool. But then you really want to focus on ones that like – are places you want to travel to. Do you know what I mean? Or, or, yeah. But if you're just saying, hey, I just want, I want to get into as many festivals as possible. I'm not planning on attending them. I just wanted to be on screens. Then that's a totally different approach. I, I think yeah. that's a great point too. You know, it's like if, if you live in Florida, why not submit to Key West Film Festival, Sunscreen Film Festival, festivals that you can drive to if you, if you have to and not have to worry about, you know, airfare and every, every, everything else like that. So whatever state you live in, whatever area you live in, start local and then expand out from there. And it's a, it's a good reason, you know, again, Key West and sunscreen over the years. It's like people want to come to Florida. Who, who doesn't want to go to Key West in, in November? You know, <laughs> I mean, what a, great, what a great time of year. What a great time of year to go to the mm -hmm. festival. Yeah. I, have, I have filmmaker friends that fly in even if they don't have a film on the festival. <laughs> they come to Key West. And I, and I tell them, hey, in a few months, Go head up to St. Petersburg. It's an amazing city, and go go spend some time with Tony at Sunscreen. I mean, these are destination film festivals, you know. And I will tell you, over the last month, I actually just got back yesterday um, from a four week tour of the U.S. with a couple of films that I helped produce. I was in Nashville, then I was at Newport Beach, then we were in Indianapolis. Then I went up to my hometown of Chicago, and this was bouncing to Chicago International Newport Beach Film Festival, Nashville, Heartland, mm -hmm. um, and finally made it back 
uh, and, and completed that tour, like, I'm not even looking at my credit card bill. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm just not ready to look at it yet. Yeah, <laughs> look no. at the credit. It's, yeah. <laughs> and also, you know, in my income bracket, I'm taking the flights, you know, I'm taking those overnight spirit flights. Right, yeah. Right? I'm taking the <laughs> overnight spirit flights, you know, like, uh, <laughs> you be, you become a you be Jeff is not available so the <sighs> the time spent and the money spent and these are films that I'm you know I'm just a producer on I'm yeah. not even the lead actor in these films you've got to really think about like am I planning on you know touring all over the country uh with this with this film now I will say the director of one of those films um that I helped produce he's doing even more traveling but he wrote and it directed it the film's really good it's been worth it for him. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, he's starting to cut, you know, it wears out, you know, six months of traveling all over the country. And uh, in his case, you've got a kid and a wife at home. Oh, yeah. It's like, these are things you have to factor in before you just start submitting to film festivals. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. what, what do you want your festival run to look like? And what do you want to get out of it? Yeah, and you can't do it forever, you know. Uh, and, you know, festivals... Uh, oftentimes have like a two-year cutoff if the film is two years old more than two years old then you then you can't even submit because if you want it to be you know new new or, or fresher what's what is Key West's um, cutoff for age of a film for Key West I'd say it's two years most are around two years mm -hmm. um, but it's 2023 right I'll yeah. be honest, if a film comes in and it was done in 20, 2021, you know, you're you're up against it. Yeah. You're, you're in a tough spot. Do you know what I mean? We're not, we'll consider the film. And if it's amazing, it, it might, do you know what I mean? It might yeah. be programmed. We, you've probably already been to 20, 30 film festivals. But if there's a film that was made two years ago and a film that was completed two months ago, and you know, all things being equal, I think film festivals more times than not are going to lean into that newer film, you know, because they. Yeah, no, and I was, that's what I was going to say is if you look at it. They, they don't need the world premiere or, or the premiere for their region, but. Yeah, if you, you look know, at a film sometimes. The second film fest to show a film as opposed to the 21st, that, that stuff does matter. It does. I agree. I agree with you. I was going to say, you know, when you're in Film Freeway in that back end and you're looking at it and you see. 20, 30 film festivals that this film has been into, and then you've got another film that's been in one or hasn't been in any yet, you're like, oh, well, we, we want to give these guys a chance. You know, you, mm -hmm. you guys have had a good run. You've played your, your, your film festivals. You don't need us to, you know, give you some more love. Here's this brand new film that really deserves an opportunity. It's just as good as yours, and so that does weigh into the programming decisions at times. I think so, too. I will say this, advice to um, filmmakers of which I am one of them. Two things. One, if you would if you're planning on attending the festival if you are selected, I think it's okay to mention that send an email to the programmer yes. and let them know. Mm -hmm. Um you know, send send them a note that says, "Hi, I just want to let you know we submitted our film. Uh it means a lot to us. We'd love to have our fill in the blank premiere at your festival and you know, several of us are planning on, you know, would, would plan to attend the festival if we are selected. I think it's okay to mention that because I do think film festivals care about, uh, they, all film festivals want filmmakers to be there. They want to bring their yeah. audiences the experience of, here's the film on the screen, and then you have the filmmaker talking about it afterwards, you know? And again, it's about bringing that greater community together. Yeah, it makes a, it makes it. I, I'm 100 percent agreement with you. It makes a big difference when, whether it's in the cover letter or they're sending a separate email saying, "My great aunt lives in Key West, and I'm definitely coming. You know, I'm going to sleep on her couch if we get into the festival, whatever it might be. You know, or I, I've never been, and I really want to. I really want to come to that area. So I'm de I'm definitely coming. And I'm definitely coming to the festival. Yeah, yeah, you definitely. You know, that's festivals love to hear that because, like, okay, yeah, we want. You know that uh, that person that made the film to actually be there and enjoy the experience. 100%. And the other thing I uh, mentioned to filmmakers is, let's say you only have $500 as your festival budget. Um, and I've worked with some filmmakers that only had $500 for their budget. And then I've worked for others that are like, I mean, they're like, hey, just 
whatever. Just we just want to submit to whatever festivals you think we should submit to. If you so if you have a smaller festival submission budget, you might be thinking, well, how do I know? When I'm going through Film Freeway and they're bringing up 10,000 film festivals, yeah. how do I pare them down? How do I how do I figure out if I should apply to, you know, if I should submit to this one or not? It goes back to what I said before about when you're at a film festival, ask other filmmakers, ask other programmers. Also, if you have friends that have films that are similar to yours, or maybe they had a festival run that you're like, man, I, I wish I kind of had a festival run like that. See what film festivals they're getting into. Mm -hmm. If you made a short comedy and your friend has a short comedy, what film festivals are they getting into? And, and add those to your list. But in terms of like research, like is this film legit or is this festival legit or not? The things I would look at on Film Freeway are how many years have they been around? Yeah. Which is, you can't fudge that. Right. And if Film Freeway does a really good job of making that clear and you can't fudge that. Yep. Um, and that's very important. Even if a so, even if the film festival is so, so, if they've been around for 15 years, they know, they know, they know they've, what, they've done they something. Know what doing. Yeah, they've yeah. Man somehow managed to be around that long. They're doing something they're halfway decent. I, t I talked to uh, the director of the film that I helped produce that we just premiered at uh, a genre festival, and he was like, I don't know. I don't know about this festival. And I go, they've been around for 20 years. I go, they might have been holding it together with duct tape for 20 years, but they've been <laughs> around for 20 years. He goes, well, how do they do that after 20 years? I go, well, they've used a lot of duct tape. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. Yeah, it's true. Festivals, festivals do not make money. I think that's maybe something that you know mm -hmm. filmmakers should know is that 99.9% .9 of film festivals do not make any money. They're happy if you break even. You know, because usually they're a nonprofit organization run by all volunteers who just love doing this and love helping out their community in some way and being involved in the industry. And so if the festival can break even when you're done, you're like, whew, okay, we made it through another one. Can we do another yeah. one next year? Can and we do it? Can we do another one? hundred percent. It is. And I think people think that this just, you know, there's just film money raining down on these film <laughs> festivals. It is just not the case. It is not the case. And I can tell you that even, well, I won't speak for the financials of Sundance, but I think, you know, I, they've, even the, the bigger festivals have felt that pressure yeah. as well. And these are festivals that frankly have, you know, uh, many sponsors that are knocking on their door, you know, but they also have a tremendous number of programs that they're executing. So uh, in, in terms of scale. The other thing, just to jump back to researching festivals, the other thing I would look at if you're like, man, I just, they've been around seven years. I just don't, they're right in that kind of, I'm not sure. Go to their social media. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Click through on Film Freeway to their social media. Do they have 200 followers? Do they have 4,000 followers? Is their social media active? Are people responding to it? For me, that's another thing that if I see, okay, they have a their their social media is active. There's they've got a lot of people that are engaging. Yeah, that it, might be something that'll point. help me. If I'm like I have fifty dollars to put into a, a festival, I can submit to one of these five festivals. I would say is their social media active? One, it means that if you get in, they're gonna support your film. Um, really look at how long they've look at how long they've been around, and uh, it's always okay to ask. There are plenty of Facebook groups where you can go those filmmaker Facebook groups where you yeah. can say, Hey, has anybody been to XYZ film festival? And, and people will let, will let you know. Yeah. And you know, I think, um, you know, it's not to necessarily discourage somebody from submitting to say a first year film festival, just know what you're getting into going to a first year film festival. If they're doing it for the first time, they're still figuring it out. Uh, but sometimes maybe your odds are a lot better getting into a festival because they're only getting, 100 films submitted to them instead of 800 films submitted. So mm -hmm. if they're going to program 50 films out of 100 that they get, well, 
you got a you got a 50-50 shot of getting into that particular festival if you just want to get it out there and start your festival run. Especially maybe if you're a new filmmaker, if you're a beginning filmmaker and you're really just getting started, then you know don't be afraid of those you know one, two, three year festivals because really it's three years I think is kind of that cutoff. Like if you can make it past year three, you're doing all right. Of those 10,000, you know 12,000 whatever it is festivals on Film Freeway, I think it's only something like. You know, 10% of film festivals make it past year three. And if you make it past year 10, it's like less than 1% of festivals are even making it past year 10. Oh, interesting. And I, yeah, I, I would also, uh, well, one, I, I think it's a great point about those first or second year festivals. It's a great point um, that your chances are much higher there, which I think all of this comes back to. Be honest with yourself about your film. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What? Where, where's your film at? Is it? Is it one? If there's a room full of a hundred films, are yours? Is yours in the top three? Yeah. And don't don't we don't have to say, well, I believe in my I believe in my film, so of course it's the best. It's <laughs> not. It's not about that. It's not about that. You just have. Like I'm an actor. Okay. I'm an actor. If I'm in a room of a hundred actors, I'm not in the top three. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, you know what I mean? There's John Hamm, right? McGregor, right? Like there, you know, and there's, and here's like 10 other guys that went to Juilliard and 10 other guys that are, you know, uh, at the Globe in London uh, next week, you know what I mean? But yeah. do I think I'm a very good actor and that I can hold my own? Absolutely. But if it's, you, at some point you have to be honest like where is your film at one is this the best is this the best film you've ever made like are are you do you just want to get it out to festivals just to kind of for people to enjoy it and then move out to the next one or is this like this is a heartfelt story and i don't get from heck or high water i'm going to travel with this thing for the next two years no matter what those are two different things but you have to be honest with yourself about the film because if you're like it's so you know it's pretty good I know I can do better, but I'm proud of the film I've made. Yeah. Then I would really look at those newer film festivals. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't feel bad. Email those newer film festivals on Film Freeway and ask them for a discount. You'll probably, you know, you save 10, 20 bucks. You you do that a couple times, and now you have the money to submit to another Mm -hmm. festival. And just keep the train moving. Keep things moving. Mm -hmm. Build your, you know, build your filmmaker community. Go to these festivals. Meet other filmmakers. Get inspired and keep the train moving. Yeah, and I think, you know, watch other short films. You know, watch Mm -hmm. other short films at festivals. And when you're watching them, honestly, you know, evaluate your own project and be like, Oh yeah, my project is nowhere near as good as 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 the last ten films that I that I watched. Okay, I maybe I need to step up my game a little bit. Or yeah, my my film is definitely better. And I know every filmmaker is very biased towards their own project, you know, and they always going to think it's great. But you just be honest, like you just like you said, just be honest with. And that's okay. Yeah, it's okay to think. It's okay to. There's a difference between believing in your film. Yeah. And. And just having an unrealistic bias mm. about your film. Do you know what I mean? Yep. You can believe in your voice. You can believe in the story you're telling. And then you might also say, and we made this short film for $1,500. You know, we made this short film for $700. It's, yeah. right? mm-hmm. And we're, we're going up against films that had a budget of $70,000. Do, do you know what I mean? You can still say, man, we did a heck of a job. Or you can also because you'll see other films I think a lot of people see films and they're like wow that film had a budget if yeah I had that, if I had those yeah. resources yeah. <laughs> with my script and what I can do with the camera man what, what we would have man we would have put on something special and yeah I mean, that, that's where you go to film festivals and you you get inspired oh no yeah. like I, I know people I know a, a friend of mine recently who um, is an author and because he's an author ran a Kickstarter campaign to do a, a short film based off of you know some of the characters in this book book that he wrote you know raises thirty forty thousand dollars on Kickstarter to make a short film you're like it can't be that bad like when you've got resources like that and you can put great talent together and group people together it's like you, something's gonna turn out pretty good with that particular 
with that particular project. Not everybody has that. And it's interesting, you know, the European films that always come in, you know, the European films are oftentimes funded by government funding and a lot of grants that, and stuff yeah. like that. And, you know, and they're spending twenty, thirty thousand dollars in every short and they're just gorgeous and they, they look spectacular. And I don't know what the Europeans are doing right <laughs> over there, but they're doing something right when it comes to supporting their filmmakers. Yeah. I also think and maybe I'm wrong, <clears throat> it's like Somehow, I think we only see the really good films from those other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I see, I see everything in America. Yeah, but yeah. I'll, I'll see. I feel like I'm only seeing like the okay. top five out of Australia or the top five out of Poland. Right. And every yeah. single one of them, right, is like presented by the film commission. Yeah. Or some <laughs> Poland or something yeah. like that. You know. There's some. <laughs> there's some government well, censor. Either, I'm, I'm seeing. You know. I'm seeing films that were made in. You know in someone's living room, you know, <laughs> for, uh, for uh, the cost of uh, some burritos and stuff. Yeah. I mean, the wide range. And then you're yeah. also seeing some that had that robust funding. So I think, Tony, I think you and I, for, I mean, it, maybe because we're in America, we just see the full spectrum of American films. Yeah. And then when it comes to those international films, we're just seeing like... Yeah, maybe maybe that's it. Yeah. Maybe that's it. Maybe there's a, there's some government censor who's just sitting there and is like, this film is not getting out of the country. No way. You're not getting anywhere. You know. Well, well what I, I what are some? Figure that there are people in Croatia making bad films. <laughs> <laughs> They're making these so-so films. You know, just three friends in a house for the weekend. And, you know, they start drinking and things go wrong, and they get in some. You know, we're. I'm sure those films are getting made. For uh, you know, and your and your mom's running craft services. That's right. Yeah. Your mom's cooking casserole in the kitchen to feed your crew of five. I mean, I'm sure those are getting made. Sometimes yeah. that's the best craft they're services, not, though. Yeah. yeah, they're not making it. They're not making it over. Yeah. yeah. What What do you What do you see in some of those European films that maybe an American filmmaker could take a note of that? Because, like you said, like you see a the top five movies from Australia and they're just all like so good. Like what is something that practical that maybe someone should keep an eye out for like when they're comparing their film to like a European film or something? Well, uh, if you, I mean, I'll throw out, there's a specific film that I loved that I saw that was made in Ireland called Sunlight. It was directed by Claire Dix. I think it premiered at Glasgow or some other uh, very notable international festival, mm -hmm. and it'll hopefully be coming out soon. Um, this is one that um, I saw it, it was submitted to a festival I had worked with, and uh, I did kind of pound the table for it, but it, it, <laughs> it wound up making its premiere. Uh, it, it didn't make it in, but this was one where looked beautiful, Americans have not heard of any of these actors, but I would imagine in Ireland they've heard of a couple of these actors. And the script is the thing. Yeah, I think that's the most important takeaway with all of these. The script is always the thing. I just saw a film that looked gorgeous, gorgeous, out of Canada, which is you know not overseas, but that's another that's you know that's a whole other whole other world. I, this film out of Canada and it had all the funding in the world and it had the best cinematographers and they're running through the fields and the fields look great <laughs> and I, I only got through that film because I had to I only got through it because oh. I had to it was a very dull and plotting script <laughs> the, the two central actors had no chemistry we didn't care about their relationship we weren't emotionally invested so the script at the end the script is the thing you can have to, uh, to what you're talking about there andrew you can have all the money in the world and if that script isn't original and vibrant it's probably not going to work out so um if you have that script I, i'd rather have that amazing script than a million dollar two million dollar budget yeah yeah well, you know, one thing that is always talked about when we talk about short films, so we might as well bring it up and talk about it, is the length of a short uh, film. Yeah. What do you What do you think? I know I have my opinions. What do you think about short films? How long should they be or shouldn't they be? What's the restriction? What's the, like the limit for submitting for Key West, for example, for short film length? Well, let's. Uh, the limit for anything under an hour is considered a short. Anything right. over an hour is considered a feature. Okay. Um, I mean, just because you, you 
got to put them somewhere. Sure. Right? Yeah, I mean? exactly. If you have a 47 yep. minute film, you shouldn't not be able to submit it. Right. Do, do, do you know what I mean? So it would be considered a short. Um, I'm excited to hear what Tony has to say about <laughs> the length of a short, but I'll give you my opinion. I have always stood by my, uh, my belief that the perfect length for a short film is seven and a half minutes. <laughs> it's long enough where you can develop characters, you can develop a story, you can bring, you can have an arc, but it's short enough where a programmer can punch it into any program. And more importantly, they can add it to a program. Let's say Tony has his Florida Shorts program for, for Sunscreen Film Festival locked, and this great seven and a half minute film comes in at the wire, he won't necessarily have to kick out another film at seven and a half. You could, you could add seven and a half minute films to your program if that's the case, if, if it's good enough. Um, so why seven and a half minutes? Well, if it's three or four minutes, you, re- you probably don't have enough time to develop story for it to be meaningful. You can maybe do a comedy short that has, that's kind of like one joke or an animated short that is like just... <laughs> that's the beauty of animated shorts, Yeah, right? they're, they're always so super short. They're rarely over seven minutes, yep. right? Because mm-hmm. it would take you like five years. Um, but in terms of going over into that 20 to 25 minute range... That can be, it, it can be challenging, but I will say, because now now this 25 minute film comes in that's really amazing. Well, you're the headliner. You have to be the headliner. I have 90 minutes of program to work with and you're taking 25 of them. Like you, you are the headliner. So now you, you, the way you have to place a 25 minute film into a lineup is what part of the pro is what part of the challenge is, right? The other thing is, well, now do I show this 25 minute film or do I show three seven and a half minute films? <laughs> right? So, um, and, uh, and then I, and then I've even got time for a little music video, <laughs> you know, so that's where the most important thing is one, tell your story. If your story is a 25 minute story, then so be it. Tell that story. Don't don't cut it down to eight minutes or five minutes or even 12 minutes just just because. But um, I will say the most important thing is you have to earn your minutes. Yeah. Once you get past seven minutes on a film, you really have to earn those minutes. If, if you're going into that 15 to 18 to 20 minute range, there has to be a reason why each of those scenes are in there and why you're letting them breathe. And maybe there are reasons, but it can't just be because, you know, you have a personal connection to that. Every single one of those minutes has to be just absolutely has to, there has to be something vital happening on that screen so that that's what i would say well and i will i will say that i agree with you (laughs) on all of that except for one thing you said you think the perfect length is seven and a half minutes i think the perfect length is seven minutes oh Oh, okay (laughs) 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 so no we're we're dead on and you know here here's an actually really interesting thing so i wasn't alive back then but back in the day when you know people would go to the movies they always played a short before the mm-hmm. films and it was always like the the Warner Brothers Bugs Bunny animated shorts or all the different shorts that they used to play every single one of those shorts back in the day were always seven minutes long and for uh-huh. some reason they figured out that seven minutes was the perfect length of a short to show before they showed you know the newsreel and the feature <laughs> and everything else that they did and it was always seven minutes so if you ever go look at any of those old original you know, Warner Brothers cartoons and all that other stuff, they were always seven minutes long. I don't know why seven, but it. but it's someone great. Someone listening is going to do some research, so let us know if we're right. Yeah, let us, <laughs> let us know. Someone, someone send us an email or comment on social media. Why seven minutes? Why is that yeah. the perfect length? But no, I totally, I totally agree with you on, on all that, especially the you know 25-minute film. It better be really, really good to take away from three sevens or three tens or whatever else you might put into, uh, put into a program. 
And I'll put out there, at Key West last year, I programmed a 37-minute documentary short. Yeah. So, mm. and I know um, some other notable programmers around the country at Oscar qualifying festivals that are all for these, like, longer form doc shorts, yeah. or narrative shorts. And I went to South by Southwest one year, and they showed three 30-minute shorts. They called wow. it medium cool, and it was three medium size, you know, 30, 30, 30. Yeah. Now, one of them was made by Spike Jones. One of them starred uh, <laughs> James Franco, but, you know, I'm sure that didn't matter. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I've programmed 37 minute films at Key West, but to do that was that film has to just, and it was a world premiere. Yeah. And it, it was very relevant to Florida. So those are the, you know, yeah, when you Tell get your story, yeah. but realize if you say, okay, we're going to make this film 18, 19, 20 minutes long, just that's okay. Just realize, keep that in mind as you start submitting to film festivals that you're going to have a little bit tougher, you're going to have a tougher road. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Good. Yeah. Well, well, before we wrap up, yeah. to give us the rundown on Key West Film Festival. When do you announce the films? When is the festival? You know, kind of what, uh, what can people look forward to? The festival is November 15th through the 19th. It's our 12th annual. Uh, we were just named uh, pretty recently one of the top 25 coolest film festivals in the world by Movie Maker Magazine. So that was nice. uh, pretty amazing. Um, we have announced our features. The feature films have been announced. The short film program will be announced November 1st. Awesome. So Perfect. we're going to announce it pretty close. And I am, uh, yeah, I have my hands full right now. I have a lot of very difficult decisions to make <laughs> uh, between some films that are seven minutes long and some films <laughs> yeah. that are much longer than seven minutes long. So, well, awesome. awesome. But Key West, we're going to have, we have parties, we have panels, you have Key West, we have amazing films, world premieres, Florida premieres. So it's really one to come spend a long weekend down in Key West. And it's the weekend right before Thanksgiving weekend. So it's a perfect fit. Come have the, like, come on, relax in the Keys before you dive into all that, all that family holiday. Uh, well, and I am, so I will, I will see you in, uh, in Key West again, Mike. I'll be down okay. there. The Dallas Film Commission is a sponsor of the Key West Film Festival. I always make great relationships. I've met some really great filmmakers down there that have, you know, building those relationships for bringing projects to, to Dallas now. And I'll be, I'm sure, doing some Q&As and probably doing uh, either moderating a panel or something as well. I know we're still figuring all that kind of stuff out. So, Mike, thank you very much for joining us on the Dallas Film Podcast. Thank I will you, see you soon mm -hmm. in Key West.